Hi. In the previous class, we had discussed about that what is mean by design, why the design is needed. We had discussed and also design factors. Now let us discuss about the design procedure. The design procedure, let us see. Here is the design procedure. So objectives of this design procedure is to know general design procedure and next is another objective in this lesson is understanding standardization and interchangeability. Use relevant Indian standards. Now the design processor. Design is a complicated task and it requires careful and systematic processor and a decision making process. The design processor is a decision making process with the main objective of optimization. Now the design processor. Once again, let us see design processor the design is a complicated task that requires careful and systematic processor and a decision making process with the main objective of optimization now the design processor how to design a component let us see for designing a machine element there is no a rigid or specific rule now the problem may be attempted in several ways so let us see here in this generally any design starts with a problem or task here you can see this table needs vertical reciprocating motion this table needs vertical reciprocating motion for this how to design and what may be the alternative solutions how many solutions may be there let us see here in this case it is required to design a simple mechanism to achieve this motion that means the table motion is vertically reciprocating motion this needs a simple mechanism let us see here one option design a one option. Uh, this you can achieve with this methodology that means with this technique here this is a cam and this is a pivot and here it is a pin or slot and this is the table due to rotation of this cam and this arm will move vertically up and down due to about this fulcrum due to this motion this table will move up and down that means vertically reciprocates this is design one by using cam mechanism and next method is say next design b is here in this case we are going to use a crank which will rotate about some axis and here also there is an arm which is pivoted at this point and at the end of this arm we are going to connect by using pin to the table right due to rotation of this crank and it will oscillate it will the arm will oscillate about the full pivot 
due to oscillation the pin also oscillates in this direction thereby there is a slot on this and due to it will move the spin will move in the slot and this table may move, will have reciprocating motion so this is the second that means in the previous case we have used cam mechanism now we have used crank mechanism here is the crank mechanism and next solution is design c and this can also be and that means the table reciprocating motion can be achieved by this mechanism also here in the previous case we are having pivots for the arm that means this arm is pivoted at a certain point in the previous case but now here also we are going to use crank mechanism and pin joint is here it is the pin joint and this is a spring and this is a ram and this is the roller and this roller will move what up and down due to horizontal reciprocating motion of this ram this ram will move horizontally from here to here that means reciprocates due to this this roller will rotate and this arm will move slide that means sorry uh, reciprocate uh, oscillate in this direction so due to oscillation due to rotation of this and due to reciprocating motion of this and this will move in this direction and the table will move up and down that means will have vertical reciprocating motion these are the three and third one is here we are going to use the same this is the pivot and this is the crank and there, there is a slot which is pin and this arm is pinned to the crank so here is the table which is having a return spring so due to rotation of this this pin will oscillate in this way and due to oscillation about this pivot this end of this arm will also oscillate and this pin will move along the slot due to oscillation and reciprocation of this pin the table will reciprocate vertically up and down and this is the solution these are the four solutions for this simple mechanism that means to get one motion we are having four solutions number one solution is cam mechanism and a pivot and arm mechanism and next solution is crank arm pin mechanism and next is and ramp crank and roller and arm mechanism and third one is and the pivot crank and arm mechanism with a spring for the table which will return by the spring and these are the four solutions we are having number one is design a b design c design d among this we can use any one as per the convenient and like this there may be so many solutions among these solutions we have to use optimum one that means the designer should have such a knowledge to design in different ways for any problem if any person needs certain type of motions in such case we can have different solutions among these different solutions like as we have seen a table should have a vertical reciprocating motion in such case we are having four solutions among these as per the convenient we can select any of these four mechanisms so for the design the designer should have sufficient knowledge about all the mechanisms and motions so now the general design procedure to solve any design problem and how to design let us see first aim or the need that means the person should have the need then only we have to create one product or formulate one product so now first step for the design of any product is need or aim 
so make complete statement of the problem that means you have you should have the thorough knowledge about your problem then only you can have a complete statement so by the statement of the problem and you will decide and identify the purpose what is the purpose of your problem that means with your problem you have to you should have the purpose and need for which the system is to be designed first step in the design general design procedure is need or aim of a person or the machinery right you should have the complete statement for this and also identify the purpose or need for the for which the system is to be designed and next one is synthesis that means study of the mechanisms different mechanisms as we have seen in the previous previous example there are four mechanisms are there that means we synthesized we have analyzed that means synthesis means analysis of mechanisms so in this we have in the previous problem for to have the vertical reciprocating motion of a table there are four mechanisms are there so select the most suitable suitable and feasible one in the previous case we have seen there are four solutions for that motion and four mechanisms are there among those four mechanisms we have to select most feasible one and identify different solutions for that problem first of all analyze and synthesize that means uh, study the mechanisms and select the most suitable feasible one and identify different solutions for that problem as we have seen four solutions are there among those four solutions we have to select one feasible one and next is analysis of the problem that means forces and what are the forces are going to occur in your problem that you must identify find the forces acting on each member of the system that means there are four uh, one in, if you take first problem first solution that means cam mechanism and what are the forces are acting on the cam and what are the forces are acting on the arm and what are the forces are acting on pivot and what are the forces are acting slot pin and what are the forces are acting on the table that means for each and every member you have to analyze the forces acting on each member first step and next is the material selection one of the most important step is material selection that means the select the best suited as per the requirement that means the material should be sufficiently strength to withstand the forces acting on each element of the problem that means the important pa parameter or the factor is the material selection that's why the success of any designer mainly depends on material selection next is design of elements that means size and stresses are there that means forces are acting so find the size of each member of the system to be designed based on forces acting material selected so based on these important factors that means you have to select a proper size and what are the forces are acting due to each force what are the stresses are developing and what type of material can withstand these forces and stresses that you have to analyze yourself and you have to select the proper size and based on the force acting and material select fifth step is design of elements that means design the shape and size and stresses are acting on the it means forces are acting on the each element or each member of the system and next is after getting your different sizes for each element the modifications 
the modifications may be alter the size of the components based on standardizations that means standardization mainly used for interchangeability that means if you standardize any element then you can interchange or you can change whenever the one element is not working so the sizes may be changed altered based on the standardizations and the type of manufacturing also type of manufacturing process also we have to change the sizes and past experience and another important factor is fast experience some fast experiences are very useful for changing and for modifying the sizes and modifying the uh, shapes and modifying the even mechanisms also right so finally the detailed drawing prepare detailed drawing of each component prepare detailed drawings of each component is also one of the important step that means detailed drawing so make assembly drawings as per specifications that means first of all you have to prepare detailed drawings for each component and then assembling assembly drawings as per your as per the specifications and also include manufacturing process to be suggested that means what type of process you are going to use for manufacturing of a component so that also you have to include in your detailed drawing that means simply we can say it is a production drawing so first of all in this final before final step prepare detailed drawings of each components and make assembly drawings as per the specifications and also include manufacturing process and then also you have to include the shaft floor and the type of machine to be used to um, manufacture and also you have to use tolerances and also you have to include geometrical tolerances all these but you you have to draw a detailed drawing just like a production drawing and finally the production so go for production of the system in workshops as per the prepared drawings so after production as per the drawings you have to prepare and then finally go to feedback that means it is one very 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 important step in the design procedure feedback so very important activity and they collect the feedback information from the production department regarding manufacturing difficulties it is a very important activity in the design step design procedure so if any modifications are needed in if any difficulties are there in manufacturing and if any problems are there in manufacturing or sometimes the machinery may not be available and machinery may not be in the function so in such cases you have to redesign the system based on feedback information so it is one of the most important step and the final step of design procedure right so once again let us see in a uh, diagramic ma manner design steps first of all need any person should have certain aim for manufacturing any system or the product so in such case what is the need of the components next is synthesis synthesis the means the study of mechanisms the study of mechanisms you have to study different mechanisms and select the proper and optimum mechanism and feasible mechanism 
there may be many solutions for your problem there may be different solutions for your problem in such case you have to study the different mechanisms and select any one of the feasible and suitable mechanism second step and third step is analyze the problem that means based on the forces so analyze the forces and the problem for a different element of your designing system that means and each and every component must be analyzed based on your forces acting on each element if any problem is there due to forces that you have to analyze yourself so analyze the problem next step is first aim or need and study the mechanisms and analyze the problem and forces and selection of material or material selection so it is also one of the important and the most essential step and important step is material selection because i told you already if the proper improper selection of material takes place the total design may be collapsed that means the components may be fail failed so the strength and success of any designer mainly depends on the material selection and also based on different manufacturing process right next step is design of elements each element so that means design of elements means designing means simply calculating the sizes of each element and shape of each element and what are the forces are acting on the each element and what are the standards and what are the forces are acting based on all these you have to select the proper size of each element next is modifications the modifications may be based on the standards available as per the international or as per the indian standards and the forces are acting and uh, the manufacturing process that means manufacturing machinery available and manufacturing process available and uh, also based based on the operators available for the machinery all these and also you have to modify based on the fast experiences so you should modify standards based on and also my manufacturing process and forces and fast experiences and next step is modification and finally detailed drawings that means the detailed drawings should have detailed drawing of that means complete detailed drawing of each element or the component and assembly drawings also including geometrical tolerances arithmetic tolerances and the standard components and manufacturing process allow available all these must be incorporated in the detailed drawings just like production drawing and then go to the production and you have to produce the component within the shop floor itself and then go for feedback final step is feedback feedback you have to take from manufacturing shop floors so if any difficulties in manufacturing if any difficulties in mesal material selected if any difficulties in sizes and if any difficulties are there that you have to take feedback from different shop floors so based on the feedback if any modifications are required once again you have to go for 
once again need synthesis analysis material selection design of mission elements and uh, modifications detailed drawings and final once again production this is the general procedure for design of any machine component or machine element so once again let us see need ra synthesis or study of mechanisms analysis of the problem or forces and the selection of the material design of elements modification and detailed drawings and the production i finally go to feedback this is the general procedure for design of any 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 machine element right so next is standardization and standard course and what are the standard course available in the internationally and nationally and why the standardization is needed let us see standardization means obligatory norms to which various characteristics of a product should conform obligatory norms to which various characteristics of a product should conform and the characteristic includes materials dimensions quality etc to make mass production of components easier that means production of any component in mass production becomes very easier because that may be the repeated everything so making of any component in mass production becomes very easy and interchangeability because of mass production interchangeability is possible standards used in mechanical engineering design for materials the standards for materials chemical compositions mechanical properties heat treatment and the standard components based on the shapes and dimensions so bolts standard components are the bolts screws nuts and rivets and belts and chains ropes and bearings etc even uh, pins also washers sir clips etc are there there are so many standard components are there and there are different materials are standardized next is for fits tolerances and surface finish of components next is testing of products testing of products pressure vessels boilers cranes etc engineering drawing you should have thorough principles in engineering drawing that means the designer should have the knowledge of principles of drawing and the types of standards used so once again let us see the standards used in mechanical engineering design are materials star standardized and some components are standardized and fits tolerances and surface finish also standardized for the components and uh, testing of products also standardized and uh, engineering drawing principles also standardized so standards types of standards used let us see international standards iso international standards iso and the national standards and the national standards are bis that means bureau of indian standards and din is the german national standards and aisi or sae society for automobile industries or it is of usa and bs british standards of uk these are the different national standards are available that means bas for india din for <coughs> germany aisi or sae for usa 
BS for UK and company own standards. Let us see the types of standards used international standards, ISO and national standards, BIS, DIN, SAE, AISF, I, and BS. And uh, different countries use different standards uh, based on international standards also. That means they have to meet the national standards more or less how to meet international standards and uh, the company standards itself. So these company standards also should meet national as well as international standards, right? And the interchangeability helps in, that means interchangeability helps in mass production, reduces labor requirements, reduce and manufacturing costs also, facilitates easy assembly of components, Extreme accuracy is not necessary or desirable because it increases manufacturing costs of a product. That means accuracy increases the cost of manufacture. And balance is to be established between the cost of manufacturing and ease of assembly. Let us see once again, interchangeability helps in number one, mass production, number two, reduces labor requirements, reduces, number three is reduction in manufacturing cost, number four is facilitates easy assembly of components and extreme accuracy is not required or necessary or desirable because it increases manufacturing cost of the product and the balance is to be established between the cost of manufacturing and ease of assembly. And now standard course, let us see, Requirements of good design engineers are the good design engineer should have thorough knowledge in use of relevant Indian standard codes. And also if you should have the knowledge of international standard codes also. So use of design data handbooks. Use of, that means the requirements of good design engineers are number one, knowledge and use of relevant Indian standard codes and use of design data books. Now let us see some of the Indian standard codes are, say this is the code for relevant and required description of the, that means IS 696 1972. The code, this code is useful for principles of engineering drawing. Okay, and the next is IS 4218 1976. IS means Indian standards, and this is the code, and this is the year of establishing these standards. So, screw fasteners. And next is IS 2389. 1963 design of boards, right? And uh, IS 4522 of 1962, heat resistant alloy steel castings, alloy steel castings. And next is IS Indian standards of 210, 1962, mechanical test requirements of gray iron castings. And some books are available based on uh, Indian standards. And this is one of the book, Honda's Design Data Handbook. This is the Design Data Handbook, which will be available in the market. So it will consist of materials design standards, component standards, as I told you previously, drawing standards, and all those uh, uh, fits, limits, tolerances, standards also available in this book and also surface finish standards also available in this book. This is one of the book available in the market, Handa's Design Data Handbook. Design Data Book. 
most valuable for mechanical design design engineers and this data book will be most valuable for mechanical design engineers and provides a ready source of references it will provide the ready source of references and gives market standardization consists of standard proportions and dimensions of various components now just like example shaft standardized keys are standardized couplings bearings belts ropes and chain drives gears are standardized components brakes uh, gears are standardized clutches and materials surface finishes fits tolerances in case of tolerance geometrical tolerances arithmetic tolerances all these are standardized so you can find in design data handbook all these standard proportions standard dimensions of a many components so for example for bolt and nuts this is the standards is dimensions of different bolts and nuts so indian standards 4218 of 1976 it is for course series of bolt and nuts and now this is designation and this is the pitch and this is the major diameter and this is effective diameter and this is minor diameter for external thread minor diameter for internal thread for example m means metric and that means indian standards as per indian standards for bolts m is representative so size is the nominal diameter and pitch is a 0.35 that means 1.6 is the major diameter 1.373 is the effective diameter and it's uh, for the standard internal sorry external thread minor diameter is 1.175 171 and uh, for internal thread it is 1.221 like this uh, the bolt and nuts are also standardized and here you can see the jib head keys and key ways so this is jib head key and this is the rectangular sunk key here you can see these are also standardized so jib head keys and key ways and here shaft diameter and these are based on the keys are standardized based on the shaft size shaft diameter d so it is the diameter above and it is the diameters and here you can see all these tolerances are also available in this and see all these are standardized that means so these are the standards for jib head keys and key ways and materials materials used for gears so gray cast iron for example uh, standard specifications are is standard specifications grade 25 so tensile strength is 250 newton per mm square and brindle hardness number for this is 195 to 200 similarly phosphorus branch cast steel plain carbon steels also standardized and a different materials you can see in this and nitriding alloy steels also there alloy steels for case hardening direct hardening alloy steels carbon steel for case hardening carbon steel for surface hardening and all these different codes are there different codes in this for gears and tensile strength in newton per millimeter square and hardness numbers are also there in this so like this uh, the gears are also standardized and their materials are also standardized and finally the conclusion in this topic we have discussed about the design procedure and standardization and standard course let us see we have discussed in this class about the general processes in design and development of machine component and to conclude the design of a product is a cyclic process always there is scope for a refinement of every time with the application of standards and usage of data book design task become easy and less time consuming 
and promotes products of uniformity satisfactory designs are possible and prevents the designer from designer from unwarranted extrapolation unsatisfactory design so this is all about the summary finally quiz let us have a small quiz so far we have discussed about the design procedure general design procedure and we have discussed about the standardization and standard course among this a simple quiz let us have most important factor in designing a product is analysis of forces that means analysis of the problem selection of the material preparation of drawing and all the above let us see as we have discussed uh, the design procedure need aim and then uh, synthesis analysis of the problem and selection of material and then all these are there among all these these a b c are also there so the answer may be let us see all the above and next is interchangeability helps in mass production it is also there interchangeability and it helps reduce labor requirement also that is also correct and reducing manufacturing cost also correct so all the above is the right answer d is the right answer and next is din is the standards followed in india germany usa and uk let us select a suitable answer is india uses bis and usa uses sae aisi and uk uses bs so only din is the german standards din are the german standards so let us see the answer b so friends once again let us see thank you for this right